Hi everyone, Scott Weaver with Designers Workroom. So today I just want to go over a few key tips for you if you plan on replacing uh, the fabric on your dining room chairs or perhaps a bar stool, which this is. And this is particularly going over having the border. So the first question is, do you really need to change the foam? Sometimes yes, sometimes no, depends on the usage and what your foam looks like. On this particular one, I can tell you the foam needs to be re replaced. A few things to notice is that there is no crown left onto this. It is actually uh, very flat. The fabric moves and I can grab it so it is loose. The reason why it's loose is not because the fabric stretched, it's because the foam is now compacted. And then you can also tell, especially when you're looking at the back side of it, that this is bulging round. This should not bulge round. This should be nice and flat um, in here. So those are all indications. And if you look at this one real quickly, this is one that we had made. And I know it's already wrapped in plastic, but I think you can kind of tell that this is nice and flat right through here. There's no bulging. There's a nice crown to it. So uh, that's what you want when you're finished. So if you're just going to take the fabric and, and re-sew it without replacing your foam, you're doing all that work and you're not going to get a great product if your foam is already compromised. So keep that in mind. But there's a couple of other really important things besides that. Uh, let me show you a couple of things on this one. Uh, the first thing is, again, if you're looking, this is this is the Dacron that's on here. That's what softens a cushion. And you should always have Dacron on your cushion. So if you get new foam, make sure you get the Dacron because that's what gives it the plushness. That's what gives it the softness. But look at how flat this is. Okay, This is what it originally started out with. Most likely it was very close to this. So it was nice and fluffy at the time. So it's compacted. Now, when you take apart your seats, pay attention to the foam and how it was cut. Don't just chuck this. Don't use this for a pattern. Well, you can, but you have to make sure you're adding. You don't want your foam to just, in most cases, but not always. Uh, your foam should be overcut a little bit larger than the piece of wood, just like this one was. You can see how this one, if I were to flip it over, there's extra around here. And that's how it should be. And the reason why you want that is because you do want this to fill to be filled out on the sides. Kind of like this one is, but a little nicer. And if you would cut your foam the same as this and don't overcut it, uh, then you're not you're gonna have some loose fabrics around here that's not gonna be appealing. So pay attention to that. You can see this was overcut, and you're gonna want to overcut yours again. So that's that. The next thing, pay attention to your fabric and how they cut it um, because you want to use this for a pattern. And this part right here is very important on some cushions. If you see that this, you have a split right here, you're going to want to do the same thing, just like this. Um, and there's a reason for it. And a lot of people are going to think, oh, that's just sloppy. I just want to sew this seam right here and be done with it. <laughs> then you get the whole thing done and you realize you cannot get this onto the board. It will not fit. No matter how much you stretch it, it won't. Okay, so there's a reason why that split is there. And that split is to make sure that you can get your fabric onto your board. And then when you staple it, you bring it over as far as you need to and then you staple it. But without this here, there's a good chance this may not slip onto the board. And if it does slip onto the board, you're going to see the whole board and it's just not going to look good. So you want to make sure, and you can tell, perhaps you can tell. Let me see if I can squeeze right in here, okay? So right in here, you can tell the, gr the, the grain of the fabric goes this way and it goes that way. And that's showing you that it is spread out. It's not closed all the way up. And the reason for that, again, is because... Uh, you need to have that laxed. And so that's why that's a kind of an important thing for you to understand that has to happen. Go buy your fabric that was on there. Use it as a template. Go buy the foam. Take a look at everything before you cut your fabric. Uh, before you plant out, do you need Dacron? 
Do you need new foam? Does it not have that nice crown to it? So these are just some of the key tips that I hope that this is going to help you when you get into uh, reupholstering. Go buy what was there. That's all I want to say. Um, and the only reason I had this, I wanted to go over this whole thing with you guys is because I'm doing them right now and it kind of jogged my memory that, you know, some of you guys, I know the first ones that I ever did, I, I didn't allow for anything like this and I couldn't get it over and I didn't understand what was going on. So, um, yeah, so definitely you want to make sure that you are uh, following what the original pattern had and, and how they did it. Um, because most likely it, it was done in a production line and they know exactly how it should be done. And sometimes not. Anyhow, that's the quick lesson for today. Thank you for watching. As always, take care and I will talk to you soon.